In 2011, the White Paper, Roadmap to a Single European Transport Area, issued by the European Commission, stated that 30% of road freight over 300 kilometers should shift to other modes, such as rail or waterborne transport, by 2030, and more than 50% by 2050, facilitated by efficient and green freight corridors. In this context, Waste Flows project was set up by 22 private and public stakeholders from seven countries aiming at encouraging a shift towards greener freight transport in the Northwest Europe region. This movie is about a multimodal experience consisting of shipping two containers alongside the East-West Corridor in Northwest Europe using two different transport chains. The aim is to highlight the current multimodal alternative available to shippers and freight forwarders to undertake a modal shift toward more sustainable modes of transport. The intermodal terminal of Betonbourg, container 1 identified as MMLU 100 0236 and similar container 2 identified as CLDU 9613762 are heading to the terminal of Ballina in Ireland. Both containers will leave Betonbourg on Thursday at 8 p.m. on different routes and means of transport. Both are 45 feet containers, as this intermodal transport unit is optimized for the maximum possible loading of Europallets. However, transporting a 45 feet container is still considered in most European countries as an oversized load, thus hampering its use. Indeed, on the 29th of September 2014, the three Benelux countries sealed an agreement allowing the free movement of 45 feet containers within their boundaries. This agreement has paved the way to the recent update of the European Directive 96-53-EC, which will allow the free movement of 45 feet containers not only on roads, but also on inland waterways. Both containers are equipped with a track and trace beacon allowing a simultaneous monitoring of the journey. This device, developed in the framework of Wiestflow's project, makes it possible to get information regarding the precise location of the container, but also to generate alerts based on user specifications. All these features can be accessed through a web-based platform. Located on the Luxembourg Euro Hub South Logistics Park, the terminal of Betonbourg is a European multimodal hub. With a capacity of around 150,000 containers per year, it handles both rail motorways and combined trains. The hub currently offers time-efficient connections to the North Sea ports and Northern Europe via Duisburg, as well as to Lyon, Le Boulou and Turkey. Connections to Eastern Europe are being developed. A new multimodal terminal is under construction and will open in 2016. Directly linked to CFL multimodal warehousing facilities, it will have a capacity of 300,000 containers and 300,000 trailers per year. CFL multimodal positions itself as a global service provider uh, covering the entire logistic uh, supply chain and is present in six European countries. And multimodal uh, logistics is the driving force uh, behind growth in the medium and long term. Compared to road transport, combined transport reduces uh, CO2 emissions by 70%. In 2016, with the start of the new terminal, uh, we will reduce uh, CO2 emissions by 210,000 tons. And uh, we um, think that by 2025, we will reduce the CO2 emissions by 525,000 tons per year. CFL multimodal train will ship container 1 to Commandant Terminal in Antwerp and during the same time, container 2 leaves the terminal toward the port of Zeebrugge by road. CFL multimodal operates a combined train to Antwerp four times a week and is a major multimodal actor connecting Luxembourg and the greater region to the North Sea ports. The Benelux region is located in the heart of a dense transport network. The region encompasses 29,000 kilometers of roads, 4,500 of which are highways, carrying 15 million tons of freight per year. The comprehensiveness of the road network and thus the flexibility of road transport compared to other modes are hampered by the overuse of roads leading to congestion problems affecting major axes during peak hours the Chalois brussels antwerp axis, Antwerp ring and road links around the port of Zeebrugge. This leads to important emissions of greenhouse gas, expressed as carbon footprint, and also to a local impact on human health, 
caused by fine particles in the neighboring cities. But nevertheless, when considering these aspects, one has to look to the total life cycle of the transportation operation, from cradle to grave. Container 2 arrives at the port of Zeebrugge on Friday at 024 after a 350 km trip along the Belgian roads. Inland waterway network in the Benelux region is a key geographic feature, with a 7,600 km network and an extensive network of inland ports. Inland waterway in Benelux carry 170 million tonnes of freight per year, counting for more than 38% of all European inland waterway flows. Rail network density is also one of the highest on the continent, with 6,800 kilometers of tracks. Despite the coexistence of a dense multimodal transport network, road flows count for more than half of total freight flows in the region. These infrastructure features were gathered into an atlas of infrastructure. Maps produced during the projects allowed a thorough representation of the existing infrastructure in northwestern Europe. Ce qui a été recherché auprès de l'équipe de l'Agence d'Urbanisme de la région du Havre et de l'Estuaire de la Seine, c'est son expertise cartographique et son expertise géographique avant tout pour alimenter le projet WISFLOWS. On a produit des atlas complets, des atlas quantitatifs et qualitatifs pour évaluer l'ensemble des infrastructures de transport de l'Europe du Nord-Ouest, mais également par focus sur des, euh, les grandes zones d'intérêt de nos partenaires dans WISFLOWS. On a choisi pour les cartographies euh, très vite la solution du système d'information géographique afin euh, d'avoir un système qui euh, permette une certaine euh, souplesse, euh, une certaine euh, modularité et de pouvoir faire vivre et faire évoluer et faire mieux partager ces ensembles cartographiques auprès des partenaires du projet. Il est intéressant de capitaliser sur le référentiel de données cartographiques construites par l'AURH et également de le faire vivre par la suite grâce à d'autres projets. This atlas is freely available as a printed version or on the web-based Geo Wastflows platform where you can create your own maps with all the data collected during the Wastflows project. Port of Antwerp. Container 1 arrives on Friday at 4.44 a.m. The train is now at Antwerp and is going to be shipped to the port of Zeebrugge. It will be transferred from the CFL train to a truck in order to be shipped to Zeebrugge during the morning. Both Zeebrugge and Antwerp own the top 10 of European ports in terms of traffic. The region hosts many major maritime hubs, handling over 900 million tonnes per year. The port of Zeebrugge, the second major Belgium hub, lies on deep water of North Sea. The advent of roll-on, roll-off techniques, containerization and the increasing size of vessels supported the expansion of the port's infrastructures. Zeebrugge is among northwestern European ports, handling over 1 million tonnes of goods per year. Zeebrugge is positioned in the middle of Europe at the crossroad between the continent and the UK, and between the north and the south. So it is a very important uh, sparehead in the intra-European distribution, and maritime traffic uh, mainly to the UK, but also to Scandinavia and to southern Europe. So we are here at the position, the Belgian coastline, where we diversify and have different services tailor-made to all destinations in the UK, up to the north to Scotland, to Scandinavia and to southern Europe from Spain all the way up to Turkey. So this is a distribution platform that can be used for European cargo to be distributed into the European market. The port has an extensive multimodal connection with its hinterland. A new road connection, the A11, is currently built to relieve truck congestion. The construction crosses a Natura 2000 zone. Container 2 is being loaded on Ferry Valentine towards Perfleet in the UK. Currently we are in the port of Zeebrugge, the container is going to be shipped on board the ferry toward Perfleet. The company CLDN operates 32 sailings per week from the port of Zeebrugge towards five destinations in Europe. The roll-on, roll-off technique allows an optimal and fast discharging and loading of ferries. Friday at 10 a.m., container 2 leaves the port of Zeebrugge on the CLDN ferry for the port of Perfleet for a nine-hour journey arriving the same day, Friday, at 6 p.m. The container is lifted from the ferry and then placed on the truck that leaves for Liverpool. After a road trip crossing Great 
Britain. Container 2 arrives at the port of Liverpool on Saturday at 4.20 a.m. The container is shipped on a ferry to the port of Dublin the same day, Saturday, at 9.30 a.m. Saturday at 6 a.m., Container 1 will embark on board Ferry MS Mazarine of CLDN, offering a direct short sea shipping connection between Zeebrugge and Dublin. Our container is now going to be shipped to Dublin. Every year, the short sea shipping handles more than 28 million containers in Europe. In January 2015, the Sulphur Directive came into force, reducing the maximum allowed sulphur in the exhaust from ships' engines from current 1.0% to 0.1% in the sulphur emission control areas. In Great Britain, short sea shipping counts for more than 60% of the total traffic due to its utmost importance in linking Great Britain with both Ireland and mainland Europe. Short sea shipping services' frequency between the two islands is 18 times higher than direct services between Ireland and mainland Europe. Still, 90% of the total flows to and from Ireland rely on the British land bridge, generating additional traffic and externalities. The Port of Dublin is the most important maritime gateway on the island. Dublin is the major Irish port with the dominant force in particularly the Roro and the Lolo services. Uh, last year there were over 31 million tonnes of cargo shipped through Dublin um, and that would include close to a million trailers and something or slightly over half that in TEUs of lift-on, lift-off containers. They're mainly coming uh, to and from Europe because there are no direct deep sea services from Ireland. They're nearly all through the gateways of Le Havre, Antwerp or Rotterdam. Uh, to deep sea destinations. Irish ports face two major issues. The first one is related to their capacity. The second issue is related to the connections of the Irish ports with their hinterland. The vast majority of cargo in Ireland has always been sent by road, uh, certainly in the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, but since 2009, uh, the Irish Exporters Association, which is partner of the Weast Flows project, has been very much in the forefront of developing rail freight as an alternative mode which has better sustainability, better uh, general long-term potential cost than road and this is developing steadily with as you see uh, the multimodal services from here to Ballina. There are also multimodal similar services from the port of Waterford in the south coast uh, up to the west and a great many other services are presently being discussed and developed. Container 2 arrives at the Port of Dublin on Saturday at 6.20pm. While CLDN ferry MS Mazarin sailing from Zeebrugge arrives at the Port of Dublin on Sunday at 7.19pm. Container 2 leaves the Port of Dublin toward Bellina on Saturday at 8pm while Container 1 is unloaded and stored for the night. On Monday at 11.30am, it will leave the port for Bellina on an IWT train. While rail infrastructure exists and is averagely comprehensive in Ireland, rail transport services are still marginal. In August 2009, IWT launched a rail service between Dublin Port and Ballina in the west of Ireland. We currently operate 14 trains per week on this service and carry over 20,000 containers per year. We hope to develop this service further using the services from the west of Ireland manufacturing to European destinations and European suppliers. On Saturday at 10.38pm, Container 2, by truck, reaches its final destination of Ballina while Container 1, on train, does so on Monday at 8pm. After a 51-hour trip, Container 2 arrives at Ballina, while Container 1 needed 96 hours. The idle time ratio is also different between the two trips. Idle time during Journey 1 consists mainly of waiting time due to the still low frequency of direct services between mainland Europe and Dublin. Thus, it could be overcome through an increase in the number of maritime shuttles and a better rail connection between the ports and their hinterlands. 
While road transport today is still more economically competitive, one should take into account its negative externalities. Rail mode is currently catching up on these aspects due to always higher taxes on road. Ironically, the train from Dublin to Ballina suffered a delay of many hours due to a road accident involving a trailer. Moreover, road transport is subject to tougher driving regulations. European countries still have a long route toward harmonizing and removing legal obstacles to ease co-modal transport. Alors nous avons produit dans le cadre du projet Westflows un, un rapport sur les obstacles juridiques au développement du transport intermodal. Nous avons à ce titre en fait développé des, euh, des analyses sur le, la réglementation existante, que ce soit des, une, des réglementations nationales, des réglementations internationales ou communautaires. Ce que l'on souhaite promouvoir auprès de la Commission européenne, c'est le développement d'un outil uniforme, un outil juridique uniforme du transport multimodal. Smart and comprehensive data on transports and flows of goods are crucial when setting up new routes and services. Dans le cadre du projet Wisflows, nous avons mis à disposition des acteurs publics ou privés des outils innovants de prise de décision, tels que le portail cartographique Geo Wisflows, mais aussi une table tangible qui a permis d'obtenir un consensus décisionnel sur la définition de cette nouvelle route logistique durable que vous avez pu voir dans le film. Au-delà de ces outils, ce qui est extrêmement important, c'est la donnée elle-même, qu'elle soit accessible, bien évidemment, et de qualité, ce qui est rarement le cas. Il est extrêmement euh, important donc que euh, les communes, les États, les collectivités territoriales mettent à disposition euh, le plus tôt possible, de façon publique, en open data, les données qu'elles possèdent. Et de l'accès et de la qualité euh, de ces données va dépendre euh, euh, la qualité de la prise de décision de ces acteurs publics ou privés pour euh, la définition de nouvelles routes logistiques plus durables en Europe du Nord-Ouest. Comparing the carbon footprints of every mode points out the evidence of the lesser eco-friendliness of road transport compared to other modes. Based on the data gathered alongside both journeys, the carbon footprint of the transport and handling of the first container is 270 kilograms of CO2 equivalent, while for the second container we have a carbon footprint of almost 700. A closer look, considering only the section between Zebraga and Dublin, shows that a direct shore shipping service has one-third of the CO2 equivalent emissions of a crossing of the British Land Bridge. While economic aspects are of utmost importance for shippers, it appears that sustainability labels, as the one developed in waste flows, could convince them to shift to more sustainable transportation modes. I work on the Wheat Flows project and the action that I'm, I manage are sustainable gateways, which is the development of sustainable gateways for the movement of freight across Northwest Europe. And we have six um, gateways in the Wheat Flows project, one of which um, is in Ireland, is the Limerick Shannon Gateway. So what we've done is we've developed a sustainable freight gateway brand, which attached to this is a continuous improvement program. And businesses and organizations sign up to it, and each year they sign up to actions on how to um, embed change within their own company, make more sustainable and efficient decisions around how they move freight and their logistics decisions. So through this continuous improvement program, these um, organisations and businesses um, are working at a grassroots level and are embedding change which will support the EU 2020 targets that we are all trying to meet. Petambourg and Ballina are at the extreme east and west of NWE respectively, physically connected by one of the densest transport networks in the world. Weast Flows project, through its different actions and the current demonstration, aimed to point out all the leverages to achieve the European Commission target of commodality. As the containers reach Ballina, we could come to the conclusion that the future of freight transport will rely on the level of cooperation between the different transport modes to build a transport chain with the forties of every transport mode. Many documents related to the topics discussed in this movie are available at www.wastflows.eu or geo.wastflows.eu.